turns inside out recursively, and that creates a centripetal suction effect in his heart. And as his heart turns inside out recursively, his electric field embeds a longer and longer wave until his plasma can become the heart of that tornado. The physics of perfect embedding or perfect nesting being the core issue here. We call this embed ability. And this is not introduction to Playboy magazine. It is rather the physics of embedding. That what allows a small donut non-destructively to enter a bigger donut. Uh-oh, this thing got damaged in transit, Valerie. Oh, dear. So there's a little donut inside the big donut. And unfortunately, the embedding principle is a little bit askew here. <laughs> i got to fix my toys. Anyway, what, what allows a little donut inside a bigger donut is idealized by golden ratio. That's called embeddability or perfect nesting. And that's idealized, obviously, by golden mean ratio. So literally, how you get in the mind of God, as it were, is your electric field becomes embeddable. Or using the physics terms, that this ability to embed is how the electric field of a virus is tested for its ability to embed on a membrane. The virus gets access to the membrane if the harmonics of the wave allow it to screw in and embed. So the physics of embedding is idealized by fractality and golden ratio. And if you were to then see how your plasma gets nested as a short wave and a long wave so that you become the center of gravity of an electric field that's bigger than your body, let's call it a tornado, then if you were to map the angle at which that tornado learns how to feed itself, you would have this particular slip knot, the perfect Gordian knot. Ooh. Thank you, Paul. You're a hero. He fixed our toys. What a wonderful... Okay, so let's... We've got to show this. It's so much fun. Now, I need to credit Dennis Lee for building this, this uh, testing model here. But this is the small donut. This is the big donut. The golden ratio in perfect phase discipline allows the little donut to non-destructively embed in the bigger donut. Do you see that? Isn't that really cool? So the short wave was not hurt by living inside the longer wave. This is how you get inside the mind of Gaia, the mind of God. Perfect nesting or embedding. And that's called the divine. Perfect branching, perfect nesting, perfect embedding. And that's a physics. And that embeddability is optimized by this particular slipknot, the Anu, which, if you were to extrapolate, becomes this map of what the clairvoyant saw at the center of hydrogen, the Anu, was later documented in the physics text by... Phillips in UK, Psi Perception of Quarks, where he showed the, that the clairvoyants were the first to correctly predict the subatomic particles of hydrogen, actually. <laughs> so clairvoyants found it before the physicists did. It's real. So when they saw this Anu, they weren't kidding. Now the model is actually poetic, but the physics is that five spins inside, seven spins outside. The five spins inside, this slipknot, refers to the pent symmetry array, five cubes in a dodeca, which is nested inside, thank you, yes, and also in here we have the, the, the cubes are inside. I have five cubes that could nest inside this model. Let's see if we, if we turn this back here, then our global audience could see this as well. Oh, are we having fun yet? Okay, so this is called the star mother, and inside you have a cube and a dodeca. Thank you. That's just the Yes, and here we have the, the, thank you, here we have the stars within stars, the pent symmetry. So there are really only two major fundamental symmetry groups. One of them is tetracubic. In the tetracubic, oh, thank you. Oh, and for tonight's show, Jonathan Quentin is going to spin these in strobe lights, and children go into trances. You have fluorescence, black light and strobes. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. In here, indeed, we have... Beautiful, this, the, the tetra cube, the tetra cube is here in pink, inside the dodeca, which is in purple. Now, as I was saying, you have two fundamental symmetry groups. One is tetra cubic, which has seven axes of spin, and the other is pent dodeca, where you have six pairs of vortex and a five, a pent symmetry. Now, there's two points I want to make about this. Why am I bringing this up to teach you about hydrogen? You have a certain amount of electric charge which is nested 
in a symmetry, tetracubic, which has seven axes of spin. If I take the dodecaecosa and I do this, this is a stellated tetra called a cubocta. If you compress it in this way and you were to actually map this change of path called the jitterbug, you would actually be doing a map of the molecular geometry of onset superconductivity in both gold monofilaments and DNA monofilaments. So the actual spiral path curve that this follows is mapping for you the onset of superconductivity in non-cryogenic materials like gold threads and DNA threads. And that actually, there's a, a project on that, uh, Tom Sawyer, Buffalo, New York, International Conference on Superconductivity many years ago. And I personally learned this jitterbug from Buckminster Fuller. Now, if you continue this jitterbug, note I have the two opposing triangles, flat, plane, parallel, and perpendicular. Cubocta, ecosa, dodeca, octa, and I simply rotated and kept flat and plane parallel, those two triangles, and now I have tetra. That tetra has seven axes or arrows of spin symmetry, defining dimension. And the seven arrows are you have four through the vertex face center pair, and then three other through edge center, opposite edge center pairs, for a total of seven arrows, which is the physics of the origin of heart muscle, Hebrew, and lots of other fun stuff, not to mention DNA codons. Now, tetracubic symmetry causes an internal lattice structure electrically based on the cube, powers of two. That creates an electric field where when waves inside that structure add and multiply, they would create destructive electrical interference. So the waves are prevented from distributing charge. In other words, tetracubic seven axial spin symmetries are perfect charge isolators, but bad charge distributors. This is a very, very profound subject, which I highly recommend, and it's a good introduction to hydrogen. That if you interfere an infinite number of waves in powers of two, we call the octave, and summate what remains for constructive versus destructive interference, you find one simple physics, and that is powers of two ratio, the octave and the square root of two, on top, I'll do that with my cursor here for the remote audience. Here's the octave, and here's the square root of two. At those ratios, when waves meet, you create maximum destructive wave interference. That doesn't mean a cube is evil, no, but it does mean that when waves get locked in a tetra and a cube, they are prevented from changing. They're prevented from adding and multiplying. So the charge is frozen, stored, isolated, called incubation, <laughs> held apart, made separate. So the tetra cube, or part of your house is where you want secrets. Or Mother Nature uses the hex of the beehive for storage, not distribution, storage. So the seven spin part of that slip knot on the outside of the Anu was the charge container. On the inside, you had the five spin symmetry. That's the opposite. That's the pen. So here on the left of this screen, if you're facing the screen, on the left I have the tetracubic lattice structure. And those lattice structures are charge isolators. On the right, I have the five ten spin symmetries, and those are golden mean ratio. Golden spiral pent generates golden mean ratio. And indeed, if we look on the top, this is the lesson that Einstein missed. If he'd figured this out, we'd have a unified field today. Absolutely. And the lesson is simple. If you interfere an infinite number of waves at the golden mean ratio between the waves, you find maximum constructive interference top center. Simple physics, whether it's electric, magnetic, optical, it doesn't matter. If you want maximum constructive interference, use golden ratio. If you want maximum destructive interference, use the octave. There's some lessons from musicians here we don't have time for at the moment, but believe me, it's profound. Okay? So, the pen symmetry is great. Constructive interference and therefore efficient distribution of waves. Yep. So if you were Mother Nature, you could design a slipknot, which is a container on the outside and a distributor on the inside, and that's called seven spins, five spins, the Anu. And that's what we're talking about in the heart of hydrogen. Now, why did we have to go through all of this in order to talk about hydrogen energy sources, right? Well, see, 
this is, I'm just showing the seven spins, five spins, this became the Ophingham. 